The bar for bagel expectations has fallen through the floor in our lifetime. So much so that there are maybe a handful of cities that even host a respectable bagel establishment. I'll tell you right now, there are two reasons for this downturn. One, people seem to be fine with month old stale cinnamon raisin Play-Doh. And two, it's pretty fucking time consuming to make a bagel with glutinous chew, crackly crust, and the fresh complex warmth of a bagel so good it needn't be toasted. So if you're fine with so-so bagels, please, by all means, take the blue pill and carry on with your life. But if you want to see how deep this rabbit hole really goes, buckle in. It's time to make the bagels. Step one is to combine all of these ingredients into a bowl. And while it's not necessarily worth taking the time to audibly name them off one by one, I do want to call some attention to the bread flour. You have to use bread flour. King Arthur brand bread flour has the highest protein content of any readily commercially available bread flour and protein equals gluten equals chewiness. You could do one better by acquiring King Arthur Lancelot, but that's typically reserved for the pros and sold in mega bulk. Yes, a couple of these items are a little rarer than most pantry fodder, but glory requires sacrifice. Or an Amazon account and the links in my video description. Follow along with any recipe for bagels, and whenever you get to the kneading portion of the recipe, you'll get instructions like, knead it with a dough hook equipped kitchen aid until it starts rocking, overheating, and billowing smoke. The conveniently inexpensive translation I get from that is, knead it by hand. And yes, it's gonna hurt a little. Now, I am not a baker, and I'm sure a real one would criticize my knead technique here, but it really is just fold, rotate, and repeat until things get really tough and your forearms start to burn. Then, suck it up and go for 10 more minutes. This is your last chance at getting that glutinous chew. Whew. Well, I'm exhausted. The dough is looking tight and supple. And now I have a legitimate excuse when people ask me why my right forearm is so much stronger than my left. I'm just gonna throw this into a bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, and leave it alone until it doubles in size. Probably an hour or an hour and a half. Portion your dough out into 65 gram chunks and keep those chunks under plastic wrap so a dried out skin doesn't develop. This is absolutely my favorite part, turning these irregular chunks into perfect spheres of dough. Make an okay sign with your non-dominant hand. Then tighten it into a very tight finger sphincter. Push the dough through it with your dominant hand's index finger and keep doing so, tightening the okay hand hole gradually until you've made a nice, clean pinch. I mean, come on, brother. Look at those balls. Absolute perfection. To imbue your bagels with their iconic holes, just pinch in the middle and then tighten your pinch until you've broken on through to the other side. Now, use your two index fingers and spread that hole apart until you've made a bagel about twice as large as your desired final size. All that gluten is super springy, so this big wide blowout is gonna shrink back into something more manageable as it rests. Are you tired yet? Is there a bunch of bagel dough in your hair? This is usually my checkpoint. Once I get to this point, I let my bagels proof in the fridge overnight wrapped in plastic. A slow proof is nice for a variety of reasons, but the reason I like to stop here is that I can do all of this prep work on Saturday night and wake up Sunday morning to finish the job. Bagels, like pretzels, are boiled before being baked. So prepare two quarts of water in a large stock pot with all the ingredients that a bagel likes to bathe in and get it to a hard rolling boil. Boil a couple bagels for 60 seconds, then flip them, boil them for 60 more seconds. As far as I'm concerned, plain bagels look the prettiest, everything bagels taste the best, and jalapeno cheddar bagels are nothing to spit at down here in the Southwest. These only need to bake for 15 minutes in a 450 degree oven. After all of that hard work, you are just a few minutes away from the reward. But if your oven heats unevenly, as most ovens do, give your baking sheet a 180 degree rotation halfway into the bake. I don't think people realize that when we make these videos, we can't use our kitchen, so we can't cook. We can't eat. We started this at noon and it's six in the evening now. I'm starving. 
These need to rest for a few minutes while you soften your cream cheese, get it ready for spready, whether that's all you add or if you also enjoy a couple of capers, smoked salmon, a thick slice of tomato seasoned with Malden salt and coarse pepper, and a thin shingling of English cucumber. You're the boss. So, is it worth the time and effort to make your own bagels? I think so, but that's just because I try not to eat a ton of bread every day. So when I indulge, I want it to be worth it, damn it! If the sun rises over your Sabbath and you find your local specialist outperforms what I just outlined today, count your blessings and save your oven for another day. But there's only one way to compare the two, and that's to get up, give it a go, and try it at least once. Uh, after you like and subscribe and all of that. Good luck! You know what? That was only the second messiest money shot I ever had to do on camera.